Well, we're here at the Altrincham FC Community Hub and Club Store with Assistant Manager Neil Sorville. Neil, it was a big win on Saturday against Eastleigh, finishing 4-0 to Altrincham. After not playing for 10 days due to the postponement of two games, how important was it to get back to winning ways? Yeah, sometimes you feel um, you might be a little bit off the pace with with not playing maybe for, for a week and a half, but um, felt straight from the, from the off. Um, we dominated the game, um, really pleased. Um, not only with the three points but with the performance as well in terms of the opportunities we created in the game uh, and how we, we, we limited a decent side to, to very little so I think it was a, a thoroughly deserved win in the end. Well it potentially could have been a farewell for Alex Newby on uh, Saturday and a good one it would have been but as we all know we finalised the permanent signing of him after his loan extension during January. How important is that for the team and the rest of the season? Yeah, look, uh, delighted to to keep him and have him have him on board for another season. If you think back to um, last season, where we had a a front four of, of Ryan Colclough, Connor Jennings, um, Chris, and obviously Elliot Newby, Alex's brother, and then January comes and we and we lose all four of them. Um, this season, look, delighted to to keep the four of them um, for the remainder of the season. Um, been really important for us and you know I'm sure with with them for at the top of the pitch and supported by the other lads we've got as well um, will give us a great chance. Well you and Phil joined the club back in 2017 together of course and he said I'll quote this from him you don't go anywhere without each other so uh, when you joined back in 2017 what vision did you have for the club and did you expect to be where you are now? Well, I think um, recruitment was really uh, important when we first come in. Um, I think we only retained three or four of the of the, the squad who was here um, from the from the double relegation season. Um, we think we, we knew it was imperative that first season in the MPL that that we got promoted. Um, we were able to do that successfully, um, and then, like I say, with the players we recruited, we felt would be okay at um, the Conference North level. Um, and then your ultimate aim is, is at that point was to get back um, to the National League. Obviously, we know what the playoffs look like. We failed once, the first one, um, in the semi-final at Charlie, and then the following season, it was successful. Um, so it's been really four really enjoyable seasons so far um, in the National League, and I think we've showed progress on each season. Well, it's our second season as a full-time club, what were your expectations at the start of this season after finishing 17th last season? Um, we, hey, look, we knew the first season was going to be tricky, transitioning from a part-time club to a, to a full-time club. Um, in all honesty, it went, it went pretty smooth, re- realistically. Like I say, I think the, the big key factor was losing the four players we did uh, at, the, at that time. I think we were just outside the playoffs, um, along obviously with Marcus Dinanga and, and Toby went as well. So... Um, you know, going into to the end of the season, the, the lads who came in did magnificent for us. You know, it was pretty much a you know half a new group of players. Um, this season, like I say, we've not had that. We've had the consistency, we've had the continuity, and we're just like trying to improve season on season. Um, whether that's win more games, lose less games, score more goals, concede less goals, and that's the way it's gone for us so far this season. Well, we're not doing badly at all, sitting in fifth in the National League, but there's lots of fixtures coming up in the next few weeks. I think it's Saturday, Tuesday games for the next few, and uh, that's a lot for a squad. How do you prepare them to go about that and play so many games in such a short space of time? Hey, realistically, you know, it's it's Saturday, Tuesday now for the next four weeks, for all the way through February. We know we're not going to be able to... Um, play the same 11 for every one of those games that's going to be virtually impossible um so we're going to have to you know know we're going to utilize the squad um uh, we've we've got good players there within the squad who, who, who've come, come come on so far and played started games and, and done really well for us um so we've, we fully uh, you know know we're going to have to utilize the squad and then obviously we're going to have to taper our training as well over uh the next month in terms of the volume of it and just to keep the lads fresh well we face Solihull on Saturday afternoon they are one point above us they sit in fourth there's a game in hand there but we beat them 6-1 at the Jay Davison Stadium back in November are you expecting there to be Solihull ex- looking to seek a bit of revenge potentially but um, I just think it's you know 
a, a fourth v fifth game, isn't it? It's really important for both clubs. Um, obviously, sit a place above us, but we've got a game in hand on them. Um, we're, we're pretty similar in terms of the last five league games. I think we've both took seven points. Um, I think we can, you know, forget about the the home game. Um, we play a day that's long gone. Um, you know, they're a decent side. They've got some good players who've been around the level for a, a number of seasons. Um, I, we know it's going to be a difficult game and historically it's always been a place where we've gone and struggled or disasters struck upon us when we've been doing OK. Well, after we face Solihull, it's three home games in a row. I think it's Dorking, then Rochdale and then Wealdstone. Ulti fans will be hoping for nine points from nine from those and we've only lost two games at home this season in the league. We've scored in every single one. How big has the home support been this season? Hey, they've been fantastic. And I think if you if you revert back to the question you asked at the start when we uh, kind of first came in and then the, the crowds have grew um, season on season. Um, ac across the seven years we've been in here, the expectations uh, from the fans is high this season. And rightly it should be because the lads are playing some outstanding football. What are your expectations going into the final months of the season as we look to push for the playoffs? We're just looking at the next game, to be honest, and maintain our form and maintain our consistency. Like I say, if we if the performance levels are anything like they were on Saturday, and you know, football is very often a random game. You can play really well and 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 lose. Um, I think looking at Saturday's game, that's the first game this season, I think, where we've completed over 500 passes and actually won the game. Usually when we're, we're really dominant in terms of that number of passes, it's that we either draw or we lose. So there can be some random elements there, but I think if they produce that performance um, over the remainder of the season, um, I will definitely be in and around the playoffs. Well, if we can produce that performance... Are we going to see you celebrating on the touchline at Wembley on Saturday the 4th of May? That's a bit um, it's a bit of a long way to go, isn't it? But like I say, we, we're aware of the playoffs from the Conference North and um, hey, once you're in there, anyone's got an opportunity. So that's our focus, um, you know, game by game. Can we push to the playoffs at the end of the season? And like I say, if we get in there, then anyone's got, a, you know, got an even chance. Thank you very much, Neil. Good luck for the yeah, weekend. Thanks very much.